on this, on this big, all right. If it's a male, you might have lines like that from the from the baldness. Okay. Now, so what you do is you grab it around here. You grab it here and peel it back like that. Okay. Peel it back. All right, and it will pull off. It'll make a disgusting sound. Um, so let's say it's some someone important, right? All right. So you uh, so you take a sample of the uh, so that mustache, right? Okay. So you. If you've been around YouTube long enough, you've probably seen, or at least heard of, a video titled Grave Robbing for Morons. And if you haven't, well, you're in for a treat. As the title suggests, it's a 27 minute long VHS tape instructing the watcher on how to rob a grave, clean the body, and sell it on the black market. For many years now, there has been discussion on the identity of the narrator, and whether or not the contents of the video are real. I am hoping today that I can further the advancement of this investigation by bringing together all of our current information and providing some insight of my own. Of course, if you have any information pertaining to the case, feel free to email me at nightfarinquiries at gmail.com or message me on Twitter at twitter.com slash nightfare underscore yt. But without further ado, let's dive into the rabbit hole of a sinister VHS tape. The origins of grave robbing for morons is currently unknown, including the date, location, and practically all information about it and how it came to light. From what I can tell, the video first appeared as one of four mini-films compiled onto the amateur DVD, Ensuring Your Place in Hell version 2, which was supposedly made around 2010 by an anonymous person. However, most people probably know the video from the YouTube channel Simon Predj, who posted it on August 9th of 2014, along with the description, A Scary Discovery these teenagers home video which shows us how to rob graves. Creepy. Before we jump into the actual contents of the video, I'd like to mention that just because grave robbing for morons is found on a DVD doesn't mean that it's automatically fake. Like I mentioned before, ensuring your place in hell is just an amateur DVD compilation that seems to contain a mixture of both real and fake videos, but we'll come back to this later. On this, on this big, all right. If it's a male, you might have lines like that from the from the baldness. Okay. Now, so what you do is you grab it around here. You grab it here and peel it back like that. Okay. Peel it back. All right. And it'll pull off. It'll make a disgusting sound. Um. Here. Right, sometimes you might find it around the jaw. It might be left there. Okay. So when you uh, so when you uh, so when you so when you bring out the jaw. So I'll show you later. I'm in the real um, um, coffin itself. It's a little. It's a bit. It's very. It, it, it's hard to find. Okay, and it's and it's very. Um, so you could lose it real fast. All right. So when you find it, okay, the jaw is usually like that. At I'm around this shape. Okay, it's like that. Okay. So when the so when the body. Decom decomposes, it's like long like that, okay? It all rots out in a flat line, almost, so you can't see it, okay? See, uh, see the top usually has teeth. The video begins mid-conversation, with what looks to be a young man explaining how to rip the forehead skin off of a skull. As many viewers have pointed out, this skull looks extremely real, as do the bones beside the young man that we can see at 33 seconds into the video. Considering how old this video looks, it would have taken a lot of time and money to create props that look this real, and it might have not even been possible back in the day. So immediately from the get-go, the viewer is under the impression that this is real, and that this young man knows what he's talking about, as he speaks like he's done this a multitude of times beforehand. You've probably noticed it by now, but the speaker appears to have a stutter. According to a quick Google search, growing out of a stutter is common for children who develop one early on in their lives. However, if a child grows to retain their stutter around the age of 8 through 10, 
then it's not likely that'll disappear without some sort of speech therapy. The young man in this video is considerably older than 10 years old, so we can assume that this kind of stuttering wouldn't have gone away on its own, which may help us with our search for identifying this narrator. However, speech therapy has been around since the early 1900s, so it wouldn't have been impossible for a narrator to seek professional help and cure his stuttering. Something that fellow content creator Scare Theater mentioned in his now deleted analysis of this video is that our narrator mentions how you should stick something into the bottom of the skull in order to clean it out, as opposed to a more professional and safe option of soaking the skull in some type of liquid, like water or hydrogen peroxide. Okay, now as you can see, these are the nostrils. Okay, for this, for this you're gonna have to take something push it in, wrap around um, uh, thin um, um, cloth or something, push it in so that we could get that real clean. On the inside, see on the inside, if you, if you don't want to make a cut around here, so you have to take something real thin and push it around, make sure it's all clean, all right? See, so remember you have a very small hole, all right? So you, so you, so you make a cut right here, so you can make sure that the inside is all clean but I mean, it won't look that, that nice afterwards. As a matter of fact, it won't look that, that good at all, okay? So what you do is you try to make the best, put your finger in there if you have to, and get it as clean as possible. All right, so that way you don't have to make a cut, and you know, it's much better if you want to. You'd assume that if our narrator is as experienced as he says he is, then he would know how to properly clean bones. Additionally, when it comes to bleaching the bones, our narrator tells us to throw them on the roof during the summertime. However, this feels like a surefire way to get arrested for suspicious activities after your neighbors see bones scattered all over your roof. So it'll be like brown and, and like beige-ish, okay? But if you find something new, it will be reddish all around it. It'll be red. If you find something really old, okay, it will be brownish. Uh, I'm all around, so you, uh, so you leave it in your, uh, see on your roof or something, okay? But uh, all right, so like it's like in the summertime or something, when it when it when there's a lot of sun, it's real hot, and at the wall, this will get all white. It will be beautiful. Everything you can put it anywhere. So you, uh, so you put it on the wall, find a way to fix the sun. It will great. And if you, you can also get the leg bones. So why is such an experienced grave robber giving us rookie advice? This would automatically point us in the direction of believing that this footage isn't real, and that this guy isn't actually an expert grave robber. But we have to consider the possibility that our narrator has his own working methods of cleaning bones, and perhaps lives in a secluded area. And despite his questionable advice, he does seem to be able to give us good information on verifying whether a skull is real or not. It will ruin the whole thing because it is hell to get the paint in here and get it right because you want to see the, the cracks like this. There's a crack. So you want to see everything so that way it looks real. Okay, you want to see, see every little crack around the sides. Right? You want to know that it's real. Okay, so that way you know it's authentic and it looks nice like that. It looks much better when it's real. Okay. If it's fake, see if it's fake, you will know when it's fake, okay. See around the nose, it's never perfect, right? Everybody has their own different thing around here. It's always somehow cracked in a way, okay? Right here, you will see cracks. If you don't see cracks around here, not cracks out, just cracks around here. See after it's washed, then you know it's fake, okay? Um, you should see some around here, cracks that, that can peel out like this, all right, like that. It's like flaky that way you know it's real okay around the side you will see every little detail on a real skull but there is no there is no way you can actually duplicate that in real life there there is no actual way you can really do it all right because you have holes going into here going out to the back um make sure there's no witnesses when you leave always bring them back if you leave witnesses Sometimes you might, you might like doing these things and everything at the wall. Somebody might see them and say, that was him, that was him, that was him. Never let anybody point you out, right? Because if you get 
pointed out, it's very easy, all right? So, let, so let's say you write the wrong five graves, all right? All right, for the first one, you might be able to, you might get caught, all right? But if there's witnesses for the rest of them, you will get caught too. Why? Because they're gonna blame you for it, all right? Because they caught you for this one, that means you most likely did the rest of them and the judge will say it was you. Never leave witnesses. If you have to knock them out, knock them out so that way they think it's a dream. It's best not to kill, but if it's necessary, do it. Um, but it's just Another bit of amateurish advice, our narrator tells us that if there are any witnesses to knock them out so that they think it was a dream, and to kill if necessary. I'm pretty sure if someone got knocked out, they wouldn't just think everything was a dream. And the line about killing if necessary is a little cheesy. But neither of these things really scream that this video is 100% fake. It just seems that our narrator might not be as experienced or smart as he claims. Throughout the second half of the video, our narrator manages to contradict himself a few times. He tells us not to rob graves while it's raining, immediately after he told us that rain would mask the sound of the robbery. Okay, it will go much more farther if it's windy. Okay, if it's raining, the rain will help you a lot. If it's snowy, the snow will leave footprints. If it's summertime and there's no rain, then that's, I think, the perfect time. Except for one thing, the guards might be a bit active at that time. So what you do it is in around July when it's a little cold, you wear some nice warm gloves. Um, the guards won't be as active there. Things are going to be cold, exactly like you are. Um, so. And he says no to the cameraman's suggestion of bringing a tool, and then proceeds to tell the viewer to bring a knife. <clears throat> okay, but um, if you're outside... Yo, check it out. If they get something new, you have to bring some kind of tool, man, because to get the head off, like, this is so old that you could just pull the head off. Something with no. skin on it still, man, you have to rip that shit apart. You have to fucking get, bring like, a, um, a hatchet or something. Yeah, if you want to and everything, um, you could bring a knife. Most likely, all right, um, if you want to, you could grab it, exactly like I said. And while it's debatable which side of the argument this point works for, I'd say this gives the video a more realistic feel as it feels unrehearsed and less like the narrator is following a script. And, I don't know. So that's about it for now. Um, the next time we'll show you the um, coffin itself and the way we opened it. And the way it was done, okay, this was made by, by Anthony, because, uh, um, well as a matter of fact, let's forget the last name. Anthony and Gino, okay? This is made by us too. Um, we worked hard. Um, also, Bucci, Bucci and Daco um, also helped it. Uh, at the very beginning, me and um, Gino first opened it up though. All right, we opened it up. We broke it open, but the other guys helped out a lot. Um, I like to put them in this, you know, but they're not here because they really, uh, because they really helped in everything. Because we're the forefathers, me, Daco, and Bucci, and everything. We're the first ones who opened up. And everything we made this trend. From now on, this is a trend. We will keep doing it for the fun. And soon, and our next big hit is Houdini. If you're watching this video, then you'll know who it was. Bye bye. Arguably the most important part of the video is at the very end, when our narrator lists off everyone who helped him rob the grave of the person he's holding. He begins with himself, and he says that his name is Anthony Cass, before stuttering and deciding, well, as a matter of fact, let's forget the last name. He then goes on to name Gino, who's behind the camera, Taco, and Pucci. This part is so important because we're able to, well, we're almost able to identify our narrator, but we're only left with the first and start of the last name. Nevertheless, it's better than nothing. There are many things to unpack after watching this video, 
but the main topics we'll be focusing on is when does this video take place, who is Anthony, and is this all real. I think the easiest part to explain will be the time frame, so let's start with that. Off the bat we can tell that this footage is old. Everything from the video quality to the way people speak and dress. If I had to guess, I'd say that this video takes place in the 80s or 90s. At exactly 5 minutes and 44 seconds into the video, we can see a VHS tape lying on the table next to our narrator. After doing a bit of research, this is a VHS for the movie Evil Dead 2, which was released in 1987. We know that VHS went out of style around the early 2000s, and judging by the quality of the camera, this looks like it was filmed on a 90s camcorder. Using all that information, this video most likely took place during the mid 90s, with the earliest it could have been filmed being 1987. Now then, we're looking for a man named Anthony, whose last name starts with Cass, that used to rob graves in the 90s. It's also worth mentioning that almost everyone I've heard talk about this case has mentioned how Anthony has a New York accent, and while I can't confirm this myself as I am bad with accents, I'll just trust their word. Surprisingly enough, it didn't take long before the internet found someone that fits the description. In 1999, a 40-year-old graveyard worker was arrested in Queens, New York after accidentally boasting about his 15-year-long grave robbing career to a federal agent. His name? Anthony Casamassima. Now obviously this would be a massive coincidence if Anthony and Anthony Casamassima weren't the same person, but of course there are a few discrepancies. For starters, the New York Times article written about Anthony Casamassima details how he was invested in robbing Tiffany Glass from the graves, and it never mentioned anything about body snatching. Second, if Anthony Casamassima was 40 in 1999 when he was arrested, then he would have been around his early to mid 30s when Grave Robbing for Morons was filmed. To be honest, I think he looks a lot younger than someone in their 30s, but I'll let you guys decide. Putting those discrepancies aside, there are infinitely more similarities. Both are from New York, both are experienced grave robbers, both worked during the 90s. We can infer that their names are similar, if not exactly the same, although we'll never know since Anthony never finished telling us his last name. And they even have similar facial structure, as pointed out by this gif made by u slash hybercrastinator. All signs point to the man in the video being Anthony Casmasima, and even though some people would argue that the age discrepancy completely shuts down this theory, it's what I personally believe seeing as there are no other leads. Now, for what everyone has been waiting for, is this video real, or is it just fake? I'll have you know that I personally believe that this video is real, but I encourage you to believe whatever you feel is most likely, and to do your own research. If Anthony from the video is indeed Anthony Casamassima, then it would make sense for this video to be real, seeing as it stars a genuine grave robber. That alongside with the very realistic looking bones, makes me believe that this is bona fide footage. But of course, there are a few things that lead people to believe that this video is fake. I'll start with the elephant in the room. The fact that this video is, at its earliest, traced back to ensuring your place in hell which at its core is a DVD made to shock people, which has been determined to contain fake footage. However, as a counter-argument, the creator of EYPH had nothing to do with the creation of the videos it contains, and there's a mixture of both real and fake footage in the compilation. For instance, one of the videos, Cooking with Hut Botco, has been widely determined to be fake. It features a man cooking absolutely rancid dishes for his family members, under the guise that he's been using ordinary ingredients. But there are also videos on EYPH that the internet has determined to be real, such as Mortuary of the Dead, a video about two people who break into a mortuary and film their adventures. This video contains many disturbing visuals, such as babies contained in jars, dead bodies, mutilated bodies, and frozen bodies which at the time would have been incredibly hard to fake. 
So while the fact that this video is on EYPH could be used as an argument for it being staged, it could also argue the contrary. That being just like Mortuary of the Dead, it is real footage. Before we finish off the video, I'd like to mention one last theory pertaining to why this video might be fake, and it has to do with a man named Christopher Boucher. Christopher was an independent filmmaker who started making films around the same time that EYPH was created, namely low quality and low budget horror films. According to Unresolved, Christopher actually sold and distributed copies of Grave Robbing for Morons, and coincidentally, his name is spelled similarly to one mentioned in the video, that being Poochie, except Christopher's name is pronounced Boucher and not Bucci. Because of this, many believe that Christopher could have possibly made Grave Robbing for Morons as one of his low budget horror films, as multiple times in the video we can see a microphone and a tripod in the room, both being used for filmmaking. However, an argument against Christopher's involvement is that he was far too young to be involved in the creation of Grave Robbing for Morons, considering it was made in the 90s and he only started making films around 2010. But to be honest, it wouldn't have been impossible for Christopher to purchase a 90s camcorder and order some 90s-esque props and clothing to make his video appear older than it actually was. And in 2010, it would have been infinitely easier to obtain realistic bone props than it would have been in the 90s. Despite this, Christopher has denied involvement with the creation of grave robbing for morons, and has since stopped replying to questions about the subject, so I think it's best to leave him alone. Personally, I don't think he has any involvement with the film, as I believe that this footage is real. If he did have any involvement, that would mean that the footage is fake. And there you have it. To summarize my take on the whole situation, Grave Robbing for Morons is a real video shot in the 90s by Anthony Casamassima, and then found and published to EYPH by someone who just happened to discover the footage. But it's up to you to believe whether or not the footage is real. Personally, I just think that the similarities between Anthony and Anthony Casamassima are too great to ignore. That about wraps up everything I had to say on the subject. Sorry this video took so long to get out, I've been finishing school and starting work. But I'll most likely get back to a regular posting schedule soon. Until then, thank you for watching, and good night.